Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpa bana chapam Anima di biravritam mayukhai Raham mityeva vibhavaye bhava Kiri Chakra Ratharudha Dandanata Puraskrita Jwala Malini Kaksipta Vahi Prakara Madhyaga Namaste and welcome to another episode of the most blissful mantra, <laughs> the Lalita Sahasranam. So today we're going to be doing only two mantras, but they're very deep ones. So it might get a little long. I'm try to be patient. Kiri Chakra Ratarudha Dandanata Puraskrita. So Kiri Chakra Rata is the war chariot of Dandanata Devi, also known as Varahi Devi. Just like there's an incarnation of Vishnu, Varaha, in the shape of a boar, there's also a Varahi Devi, an expansion of Lalita. Now, the last three Namas have been about the three war chariots. Huh? Rata Rudha. Rata means chariot. And Rudha means war, fighting, destruction. So these chariots, armed with all kinds of weapons, go into war against who? Good old Bhandasura. <laughs> now Bhandasura represents ego. He represents ignorance, foolishness. Bhanda means a clown, a juggler, a fool, like in the courts of the kings. Uh, the fool was there to provide levity. If things got too serious, he'd start to do stupid things. So Banda, the false ego, is like that. Banda means someone like a clown, a class clown, you know, who tries to get attention by doing stupid stuff. So in the allegorical interpretation of the Namas, he means the false ego. And the two goddesses, Varahi and Gaya Chakra Mantrini. Mantrini Devi is the administrator of the universe, and Varahi Devi is the general of Lalita's army. The three of them always ride together because they are the two right and left hand goddesses. And uh, so they're a very formidable trio. She's already, Varahi is already mentioned in Nama 11. Panchatan Matrasakaya. Kiri means Varaha, Kiri Chakra. And Varaha means boar. She's also called Dandanata because her weapon, her favorite weapon is the Danda, the staff. Uh, she's expert staff fighter. When we were in Palani some time ago, uh, the monks there are very expert staff fighters. And they put on an exhibition. And uh, they were really, really good, you know, martial arts people. The staff is a very powerful weapon. And when it's used with skill, it's almost unbeatable. So Kiri also means light. So light refers to creation. Uh, God said, let there be light. <laughs> and so Shakti turned on the lights. <laughs> so Shakti Lalita, she is the light in the physical universe. And Mantrini is the sound. And Varahi, she stands for destruction. 
So here you have creation, maintenance, and destruction, the three main functions of Shakti in their personified forms. Akiri Chakra also means the vehicle or seat of a yogi, a jnani. A yogi is seated on this chariot of the body. Uh -huh. He doesn't think, I am the body. He thinks this body is a vehicle, and I'm utilizing this vehicle to go to my destination. And what is his destination? Brahman. So a real yogi is always a jnani. Even though he may practice other forms of yoga to um, make up any imbalance in his body or in his mental configuration, uh, such as karma yoga, raja yoga, bhakti yoga, he, he knows that all of these are lower forms of yoga because they're about form, name and form. Uh, name and form and consciousness are the three levels or seeds of illusion. So the jnani knows that the reality is even beyond consciousness. We've been talking about this lately. It's a big realization, a huge realization, because most of us are so attached to consciousness, isn't it? We think consciousness is, where, is what we are. Even spiritually inclined people tend to believe this. But actually consciousness, think about it for a minute, is how we experience suffering. Well, you might say, yeah, we experience pleasure too through consciousness. But that pleasure, even that pleasure is actually suffering because it's impermanent. It may be nice while it's happening, but it never lasts. So, we experience pleasure, and then because the pleasure has to end, we experience sorrow. Isn't it? So consciousness is the vehicle for both pleasure and pain. And even the pleasure turns into pain after a while. So the Buddha says this consciousness is nothing but suffering. Huh? But we have a weapon, and the weapon is called sankara. Sankara means the uh, impetus, the creative impetus, the will. So fabrications made by Sankara, if they are brought under control and used to steer us towards Brahman, instead of steering us toward the creation, duality, but to turn us around, turn the chariot around and go back to the origin, then this same process of fabrication becomes the key to our release. So this is what a yogi is doing. A yogi, yeah, he's making fabrications all right. He's using name and form and consciousness, name and in, this, in the form of mantras, and form in the form of asanas. Okay, and I don't mean just the usual yoga asanas that you, <laughs> that you learn down at the local yoga center. I mean the real yoga asanas that are inner and are configurations of energy through the chakras and so on. These are very powerful, and these can be the three weapons or the three chariots, the three goddesses. So there's all kinds of levels of interpretation of these namas. And I could go much deeper. I have so much more material than I could ever present. But we have to move on. The next. Jwala malini ka kshipta vahni prakara madhyaga. Jwala malini. Jwala malini means the five shakti triangles in the Sri Chakra. Shakti triangles are the ones with the tips pointing down. And the Shiva triangles are with the tips pointing up. So there are five Shakti triangles and four Shiva triangles. And these intersect and combine and create a total of 51 areas. Area 51. Hmm. <laughs> and these 51 areas are ruled by 51 goddesses all expansions of Lalita. 
And each of these 51 goddesses, wait for it, represents one letter of the Sanskrit alphabet and one part of the body. So we're going to be getting into this in our parallel series on the matrika, the matrix of the Sanskrit alphabet and how it relates to creation and the whole thing. Yeah, there are four Shiva triangles and five Shakti triangles. And in the middle is the Bindu. Bindu means dot. And this is a dimensionless point. And this is where Shiva and Shakti unite. In other words, Brahman. So Brahman has no dimension, no form, no time, no space, uh, no change. The only thing about Brahman is awareness. Brahman has unlimited awareness, but that awareness has no object except itself. So this is Brahman. This is what we're trying to realize. This is what we are, really. During the war with Bandasura, Lalita asked Jwala Malini, uh, Jwala Malini, this name, is one of the Titi Devis. Titi means the stations of the moon. It, during the moon phase, there are 14 Titis. 14 Titis in the uh, waxing moon, 14 Titis in the waning moon, for a total of 28. Uh, there are 27 nakshatras in the moon's course around the uh, earth every lunar month. 27 nakshatras plus the new moon, which is Lalita herself. So you see, everything is tied together. Everything is related. Everything goes back to this central point of the Sri Chakra. Everything goes back to... Uh, Sri Yantra, this design of nine triangles and the Bindu. So this is a whole system that represents everything there is or can be and all the goddesses who control it. So anyway, during the fight with Bandasara, Lalita asked Jwala Malini to create a fort of fire that no one could surpass. So she created this fort, and then Lalita and all the other goddesses stayed on the inside of this fort, and this protected them from the attacks of Bandasura and his army. So that fort is still there. In other words, there is a barrier, an impenetrable barrier, that false ego cannot approach. So in other words, to, to approach the goddess, to realize the goddess, one has to drop the ego. See, these stories all contain deep philosophical points. When the ego is dropped, when one no more considers oneself an individual, but simply everything that one thinks of as I or mine is actually Shakti. When one has this realization, only then can one approach her? Because we realize there is no I. There is no myself. Uh, self with a small s. The individual, the empirical self. There is only the great self, which is Shiva and Shakti. Unlimited Brahman and his energy, which makes the appearance of a material creation. But the creation is only apparent. It's not real. It's an illusion. It's an entertainment. It's like a TV show for Shiva. He enjoys seeing his reflection in the creation. And when he gets tired of it, he destroys the whole thing. <laughs> and he and Shakti remain together in the interim. So the deeper meaning of these namas is that... <laughs> Well, there's so much material here. You're just going to have to read the book, you know. <laughs> I have in the description, I have linked to the book, Deep or Confidential Meaning of Lalita Sahasranama. 
You have to read the book because there's too much to talk about here. These namas are so deep and confidential also that it's only for those who have a connection with a bona fide uh, enlightened spiritual master really deserve to get these meanings. So I'm very fortunate. I was initiated by a Shakta guru and took sannyas from him. And so all of this knowledge has come to me effortlessly. It's just amazing. Uh, this, this Kaula path, Kaula yoga path, is the most powerful, deepest, most ecstatic, <laughs> and most true, uh, because it includes all the other paths. It doesn't deny anything, but rather, everything that exists is present and can be derived somehow from the Sri Yantra. This is the topmost path. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.